guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitars Ready Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Name by the Goo Goo Dolls. Now the studio version of this song has very unique tuning on the guitar. So I will actually teach you two different versions of playing this. The first method is gonna be a standard tuning version. So just simple standard tuning and a capo on the second fret of your guitar. And the second method I'll teach you in this lesson is how Johnny Resnick actually plays it. If you wanna master chords back to the front, then be sure to head over to guitarsreadyhero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you wanna improve in your guitar in general, then be sure to check out Guitars Ready Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. All right, let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so first off, I wanna teach you how to play this song in standard tuning because to get into the alternate tuning, it is quite a bit of a hassle. I'll cover that alternate tuning studio version in the second half of this video. But for this standard tuning version, we'll just obviously need our guitar in standard tuning and a capo on the second fret of our guitar. Now let's start with the intro, which is also used in the verses and the breaks for this song. So there's just two lines of chords here. Now I'm gonna first teach you a simple version of it, and then I'm gonna teach you a slightly more advanced version, which includes that melodic riff. So let's start with the simple version. There's just two lines of chords here. We're gonna start with the G chord here. Now for our strumming pattern, it's an eighth note strumming pattern that just goes down, down, up, up, down, up. Now what I would suggest doing as well is on the first down strum for each of these chords, really focus on the root note of what you're playing as that will just really emphasize the bass line. So down, down, up, up, down. Then we go to a D slash F sharp. So lift your middle finger, your next finger goes to the second fret relative to the capo on the sixth string and middle finger on the second fret of the third string. So this is our D slash F sharp. We're gonna play the same strumming pattern. Then we'll go to a C add nine. So it's the same as our G shape, but just our index and middle fingers on the fifth and fourth strings. Again, focus on that root note on the first down stroke. And then finally we go to an E minor seven. So that's index and middle finger on the second frets of the fifth and fourth string, and ring and pinky finger on the third frets of the first and second string. So that's E minor seven, and then finally a D. Now the E minor seven and D are contained within one bar of music, and they're each just gonna be strummed with a down, down, up. So down, down, up, down, down, up. So in total for the first line of chords, Now for the second line of chords, we start off with C major seven. So it's the same as our C add nine, but now we have our ring and pinky fingers lifted. We're gonna play, we're gonna strum this with a down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then for the second bar, we'll place our ring finger onto that third fret of the second string. So C add nine. And we're gonna strum this with a down, down, up, up, down, up. So from the C major seven to the C add nine. And that's just repeated through twice for the second line of chords. So in total, a simple way of playing the main chord progression that you hear in the intro and the verses will sound like this. So that's a simple way of doing it. Now let's try a slightly more advanced version which incorporates the melodic riff in the second line of chords. After the first line of chords, we have this riff here which is shown below. So we'll start with just our middle finger on the third fret of the fifth string. And we're gonna focus on that on the one beat. On the two beat, we'll do a down stroke, but we'll hammer our index finger onto the second frets of the fourth and third strings, like that. And on the next down stroke, we'll hit those three strings again but hammer our pinky finger onto the fourth fret of the third string. And on the fourth beat, we'll lift everything except our middle finger and we'll just hit it down. So in essence, the rhythmic direction is down, 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 up. And for the first bar. And then for the second bar, we get into a full C add nine chord shape and we're just gonna strum this with a down, down, up, up, down and those first two bars. We don't want our sixth string ringing out at any point during this riff either. So I like just using my thumb to reach over the top to lightly touch the sixth string so that's muted. Now for the third bar, 
We start off the same way as we did in the first bar. So we start on the root note, then a down strum where we hammer our index finger into place. Then another down stroke, but we hammer our pinky finger into place. Now the difference here is that we'll stay in this position on the four end beat with the down up stroke. And the third bar in total. For the final bar, we'll start with the down stroke. But on that down stroke, after you strum it, pull your pinky finger off. And then we'll do a down, up, hold it out for a one beat. And then on the last three down strums, starting with an up stroke, we'll go back up to the fourth fret, then lift the pinky finger on the next down stroke. And then on the final up strum, lift your index finger. So the last three strums. And the bar in total. And the third and fourth bars. And the riff in total. And in total, the slightly more advanced way of playing the main chord progression will sound like this. Now the next thing to learn is the chorus. It's nice and easy, there's just two lines of chords here. We're gonna start with an E minor seven chord shape, and then we go to D, and then C at nine for two bars of music. We're just gonna use that eighth note strumming pattern that goes down, down, up, up, down, up, for each chord that you see below, and it'll sound like this. So that first line of chords is played through three times. The second line of chords is E minor, D, and C add nine. But when we hit that C add nine, we just hold it out for three bars of music. And then we go back into the main chord progression. But that's it for the chorus. If you want to see it in context with the actual song, go to the playthroughs at the end of this lesson. Next is the solo section. I'll teach you the solo later in this lesson using the alternate tuning. But for the standard tuning version, during the solo, you could just play these three chords, E minor seven, D, and C add nine for two bars. You can just play that again and again for the solo section. Finally, there's the outro. Now the first line of chords is the same as our main chord progression, so nothing you to learn there. In the second line of chords, we hit a C add nine, hold that out for two bars, and then there's another riff here which is similar to the riff we had in the main chord progression, but it's a little bit different. So we're gonna start with our index finger barred across the second frets of the fourth and third string and our middle finger on the third fret of the fifth string. So we'll start with a down stroke and hammer your pinky finger into place. We'll continue in this position with a down, up, down, and then on the next up stroke, lift your pinky finger, and then on the final down stroke, lift your index finger. And then we end the song on a G chord. So the outro will just sound like this. And that's it for a method of playing this song in standard tuning. Okay, so let's take a look at the studio version of this song. First off, let's talk about the tuning that is required for this studio version and how Johnny Resnick actually plays it. Now for the tuning, your low E will go down to a D note. So low E to a D, our A string will stay the same. The D string will need to go up in pitch to an E note. So that's up two semitones. Then our G string, will also need to go up two semitones to an A. So that's an A note. Now, if you're brave enough, you'll need to tune your B string up to an E note. So that's the same pitch as the high E string. Now, what Johnny Resnick actually does though, is he restrings the second string to the same gauge as the first string. So I have a 12 gauge string here on my high E. I've also placed a 12 gauge string here on my second string and those are both tuned to E. It's a lot of effort to restring the second string in order to play one song, because if you're gonna to try to tune a B up to an E, chances are at some point it might snap. But to recap, we have low D, an A, an E, an A, and 
two E strings. So let's take a look at the main riff of this song and there's two lines of tab here. So we're gonna take our middle finger and put it on the seventh fret of the sixth string. Now, as you're using your middle finger to fret this sixth string, what you can do is also lightly touch the fifth string so that that is muted. So this is our first chord position. Now we're gonna start with the root note and then we're gonna go down, up, up, down. Up. So it's an eighth note strumming pattern. So one and two and three and four and. Then we'll do the exact same thing down one fret, so sixth fret of the sixth string, and we definitely need our fifth string muted here, and that will sound like this, down, down, up, up, down. Then we'll take our middle finger and put on the fifth fret of the fifth string, and this is going to be our root note now. For the final bar, we'll take our middle and ring finger and put it on the fourth frets of the fifth and sixth strings. We're going to hit this position with a down, down, up, and then we shift this position down two frets, do the exact same thing. Down, down, up. So the final bar. Down, down, up, down. Now on the first down strum of each chord, really try to focus on the root note that you're fretting, as that will really bring out the bass line. So in total. For the second line of tab, we're going to start by hitting just the open sixth string, and then our index finger will go onto the seventh fret of the fifth string. Here we can just kind of strum from the fifth string onwards, but hammer our ring finger onto the ninth fret. And then for the next down strum, put your index finger on the seventh fret of the fourth string. We're going to do another down strum from the fifth string, but hammer your pinky finger into place onto the ninth fret of the fourth string. So two down strums there. Now on the final down strum, we're going to strum from the fifth string onwards, but slide through ring and pinky up to the 12th frets. So just four down strums in this bar. For the next bar, we stay in this position with the down, down, up, up, down, up. And these two bars in total. The third bar starts off the same way as the first bar in this line of tab. So the first three down strokes are the same. But then we end with a down up. Yeah, so. For the final bar, we'll hit a down stroke, but pull our pinky finger off and have our index finger there on the seventh fret of the fourth string. So down stroke, pull off and then down, up, so. Then on the next up stroke, we'll put your pinky finger back down. Then on the next down stroke, lift the pinky back to seventh fret. And on the final up stroke, just lift all your fingers and do an up stroke there. So the final three strums and the bar in total. And the second line of tab in total. And that's the main riff in total, which sounds like this. So that's the main riff which is used in the intro, the verse, and the breaks. Next thing to learn is the chorus, which is pretty simple. It's just this fourth fret position, and then second fret position, and then open position. Now the fourth and second fret positions are gonna be strummed with a down, down, up, up, down, up once, and the open position played for two bars. So the first line of tab. That line of tab is played through three times and the second line of tab is almost the same except when we get to our open position we're just going to hit the open sixth string and let that 
ring out for three bars of music. If you want to see that in context, then go to the playthrough at the end of this lesson. Next part to learn is the solo section. It's just all strumming here and moving notes up and down on the third string. We're going to start with the second fret of the third string. We're going to start with the down stroke and hammer onto the fourth fret. And then continue with a down, up, down on the up stroke, back down to the second fret, and then lift our index fingers with the final down, up. So the first bar. Then for the second bar, start with the open position, then two strums. And then on the up stroke, second fret, fourth fret, and then on the up stroke, back to second fret. So the second bar. For the third bar, two open position strums on the one, two beat. Then open position, second, fourth, and then up to fifth. And the third bar. We hold that into the next bar, and on the end beats, we're gonna be going to the fourth position, fourth position, fifth position, and then open position. So the first line of tab. For the second line of tab, we're going to start with the down strum and then pick it back up on the two beat with a continuous down up. One and two and three and four and. For the second bar, start with the open position, then fourth, second, and back up to the fourth, second, and open. So. Then back to the open position for the third and fourth bar with a down, 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 up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So the second line of tab. For the third line of tab, we start with the open position, then second, fourth, fifth, hold that out. Then on the next upstroke, fourth position, and then open position. So the first bar. For the next bar, seventh fret, and then ninth fret for the next three strums. Hold that out, and on the next upstroke, back to seventh. So the second bar. For the third bar, we start off in this position with a down stroke, but slide up to the 11th. Then onto the 12th fret with a down, up, down, up, down. And on the end beat after four, down to the 11th fret. So. And for the fourth bar, 12th fret on the up strokes and 11th fret on the up strokes. Third line of time. In the first half of this solo altogether. For the 4th line of tap we start on the 11th fret, back up to the 12th fret. On the next downbeat, 12th fret, and then down to the 11th fret for the rest of the bar. So the bar in total. For the 2nd bar, 11th, 12th, and then on the next upstroke, 14th, on the next upstroke, 16th, and then down, and then on the final upbeat, the 17th fret. So the second bar. For the third bar, 17th, 16th on the two and three beat. So one and two and three and, and the four end beat, 16th position again. So one and two and three and four and. And for the final bar, 16th, 17th, 16th, 16th. Hold that out for a beat and then go down to 14th on the next two up strokes. So the final bar. And this 
fourth line of Tab and Tail. For the fifth line of Tab, down to the twelfth fret. On the next down stroke, another twelfth fret position. Then on the up stroke, eleventh fret for two strums. Back up to twelfth fret for the rest of the bar. So the bar and tattle. For the second bar, stay in this 12th fret position, then down to 11th fret. Back up to 12th. And then up to 14th on the final upstroke. So the second bar. For the third bar, back to 12th position. On the next down stroke at 12th position again, down to 11th. Then up to 14th fret. So this third bar. Hold that out into the next bar and we're gonna do an up, down, up on the 16th fret position. And then same on the 17th. And that's the fifth line of tab in total, which sounds like this. For the final line of tab, start with the 17th fret on the upstroke 16th, and then on the next upstroke 14th fret, then on the next upstroke 12th fret for the rest of the bar. First bar. For this next bar, stay on the 12th fret, on the upstroke go down to 11th fret on the next three strums. On the next upstroke back to the 12th fret, and then end with one more 12th fret strum. So the sixth line of tab. and the final three lines of tab in total. That's the solo section. Now, if that is too difficult for you, you, you can just simplify it by playing the chords in the main chorus. So this fourth position, second position, and open position for two bars. Now, the final thing to learn in the studio version is the outro. Now, the first two lines of tab is just the same as the main riff. For the third line of tab, it's the same as the first line of tab. And for the fourth line of tab, we just end with an open sixth string, hold that out for two beats, and then we end with this bar where we have ring finger on the ninth fret of the fifth string, index on the seventh fret of the fourth string. We're gonna start with the down stroke here and hammer your pinky finger onto the ninth fret of the fourth string. On the two beat, pick it up with a down, up, down. Then lift your pinky finger on the next up stroke. And then lift all your fingers on the final fourth beat. And so far. And then to finish this song, middle finger on the seventh fret of the sixth string. We end on that chord. So the final lick. And that's everything for the studio version of this song. So now I'll do two playthroughs of this song. The first playthrough will be the studio version with the alternate tuning, and the second playthrough will be the standard tuning version. I'll also have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
I won't tell them your name.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzeritohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.